Hey, how y'all doing? I'm Scott Walters. Welcome back to the Bulletproof Garage. Today, we're going to go over how to save time and money by polishing your crankshaft at home. So our intended victim, this is the crankshaft from Project Brutus. For those of y'all who aren't familiar with Brutus, he's a 1987 F-350 crew cab long bed diesel dually 4x4 conversion field fine project truck. All right. And Brutus has got a 7.3 diesel that I sourced out of another truck, and this is the crankshaft from that truck, all right? Now, after I disassembled the engine, I inspected the crankshaft, I mic'd the journals, and the journals are all within spec, all right? If they're not within spec, you really need to take it to the machine shop to have it ground undersize. I also inspected the journals for gouges and scratches. They only have a few light scratches, no gouges. Again, gouges, you're taking it to the machine shop, all right? And when I say a light scratch, um, I can feel a little bit of roughness if I go over the journal with a fingernail, but nothing is catching, all right? So I can tell that it is not completely 100% smooth, but I'm not catching anything with my fingernail. Again, if you catch something with your fingernail, you may be at the point where you need to take it to the machine shop. Now, why not just take it to the machine shop and skip all the nonsense in the garage? Pretty simple, time and money. My machinist is a little more than an hour away, okay? So by the time I load up the crankshaft, get there, drop it off, talk to the machinist and get home, I'm two and a half, maybe three hours into this job and I still have to go pick it up, all right? So, you know, I'm looking at uh, four hours total. That's a lot of driving. And I can tell you that this job is not going to take four hours. On top of that, my machinist is gonna charge, I don't know, maybe 150 or 200 bucks to polish the crank, okay? I'm gonna do it for a lot less than that. We're gonna have maybe $20 total in materials, if that. So again, time and money. It makes sense to do the job yourself. All right, now let's zoom in and I'll talk you through the process. All right, step one, just hit the journal with a little bit of brake clean or something similar. All right, you want to get all the debris off of it before you start your polishing. Um, yeah, this journal's in really good shape. You know, there's just really um, hardly any discoloration. You can see a little bit of a change in the surface right here, and that's where your bearing groove is going to be located. So um, it's a little duller right there, but, but other than that, you know, it looks really good. But we can make it better. All right, so what I've got here is I've got a strip of 600 wet dry sandpaper. All right, so we're going to use three different flavors of sandpaper. We're starting with the 600, and it being wet dry, we're going to go ahead and hose it down with some oil first. I've just got WD-40. All right, you want to use some a lighter uh, type of oil here. You don't want to use 90 weight gear oil or anything like that. Okay, so go ahead and apply your WD-40. It's nice and wet. Okay, I have uh, 54 inch shoelaces and they're somewhat wide, all right? So, so now that you've got that wrap there, you're just gonna wrap the shoelaces around twice. All right, then you commence to polishing. You know, I'm going to spend a few minutes with each grit on the journal. And it takes a little while to get the feel for. And what you want to do is you want to make sure that your shoelace is not always in the same spot on the journal. All right, so you see I'm trying to vary it here, there. So you're not all push, putting the pressure in the same spot each time. All right, I've been going for about two minutes. And let me go ahead and get that off. All right, wow, yeah, already a big difference. You know, that is a uniform color and shine just about all the way around. All right, so that's round one with the 600 grit. Okay, round two, 1000 grit. Same deal here, folks. Oil it down.
Okay, that's two minutes. All right, even better. One more round. All right, now we've got 1,500. All done with the 1500. Oh, that's looking really nice. That is looking really nice, but we're not done yet. Okay, the last step I've got Mother's Mag and Aluminum Polish. This is works for all metals, all right. So you just go ahead and apply a light coat, and then what I've got is just a strip of uh, t shirt. I'm going to wrap around a few times and commence to polish it. All right, and that is the finished product. Man, that looks fantastic. You can see the difference between this journal and that journal, and obviously it looks a lot better than it did when we started. Okay, folks, I am done. That was a tedious task, but a really rewarding one because the crankshaft looks fantastic, all right? I mean, the journals are all shiny, polished, and they look brand spanking new. Okay. Folks, when you're done, you have got to spend some time cleaning your crankshaft and cleaning it thoroughly, right? Because you've got all that metal polish and all that sandpaper, a lot of the sandpaper grit came off of the paper and it went where? Right into your oiling holes, all right? And that's where it's going to sit if, unless you clean it out. So what I did is I took a bore brush, right? And I took some brake cleaner, I used a whole can of brake cleaner and I went through and I probably hit each hole in the crank uh, at least three times from both directions to get all that grit out because what you don't want to have happen is when you start up that brand new rebuilt engine and you know your oil system pressurizes and immediately flushes all that grit out <laughs> of the crank oiling holes and right onto your um, bearings and your nicely polished crank journals and wrecks them okay so clean the crank Clean it thoroughly, take some time and do that, all right? And, uh, and hopefully you won't be tearing your engine down, you know, another week or two after you installed it in your car. So, um, what else? You gotta protect the crank because it's gonna flash rust almost immediately, unless you do. So what I like to do, I, I use this Shield T9 uh, rust and corrosion protection. No, they're not a sponsor. I don't have any sponsors, all right? Um, but, uh, you know, it, I prefer that to WD-40. You have to order it online, but it's good stuff, all right? Uh, so I'm going to coat the whole crankshaft with that, and then on the journals, on each and every journal, they're going to get a nice thick coat of grease. So before I um, build the engine, which is going to happen in another week or two, um, I'm obviously going to have to give it a good cleaning again. And I'm fine with that, because what I don't want to have happen is when I'm going to install the crankshaft in the engine, and I find rust on these freshly polished journals, all right? I would, uh, that would ruin my whole day. So, all right, folks. Uh, Signing off here, but before I do, um, if you found the video informative, helpful, useful, entertaining, or whatever, please hit the like button and consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks, and we'll see you next time on the Bulletproof Garage.